Thank you for tuning in to the Afternoon Pint. This episode is sponsored by Camille Najat of Exit Realty, Strategy Up Business Consultants, and ISS Atlantic Security Guard Services. Enjoy the show. Cheers! 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 Well, welcome to the Afternoon Pint, uh, Morning Coffee Edition. I'm Mike Golden. I'm Matt Conrad. Who do we have with us today? Oh, Peter Lepeniotis. Perfect. Yeah, nice Peter. to meet you, Peter. Nice Cheers to meet you guys. Welcome. So in the in the spirit of morning coffee edition, I, I'll let you know, I, I'm here in front of my Halloween shrine at home. I don't know if you can see, Peter, but we have the zombie deer in the back here. Uh, oh, we, that's the deer picture you were talking about, the yeah. glowing eyes. So we repurposed an old Ikea painting, my partner and I, and we put uh, some lights in its eyes and put some blood around to make it look scary. The kids didn't like it. We thought they thought it'd be fun, but they were like, ew, why'd you do that? <laughs> and then uh, for drinks, I'm having uh, a hot toddy, J.D. Shore uh, rum, a little Nova Scotia maple syrup. Matt, look at that, buddy. Oh, there you go. And uh, and I uh, just use a little tea and uh, and uh, lemon there, right? So well, what are you drinking, I'm, Matt? I'm at my folks' place, hence we were talking earlier about uh, the terrible hockey team uh, in the background. But what's the better Canadian brunch drink other than a Caesar? So. I'm drinking a Caesar, a little extra spicy. Perfect. Peter, what are you having? I'm having a coffee. Nice. And last minute, threw in some Baileys. Really quick to, oh, there you go. to join the team. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for <laughs> joining us. Uh, I mean, uh, the reason we're here to talk today is your movie, zombie movie, is coming out, I think, October 22nd uh, on the Hollywood Suite package, right? That's Hollywood Suite done on just Canada-wide if you want to check out the show. So, zombie movie, this is your first live action feature, right? Like, you've had a pretty crazy career. 30 years, I think, now in the industry from going and, and a bit of a transition from animation to film. Is, is that correct? That is totally correct. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Animation for, yeah, I'll, since 93, graduating from Sheridan College in Oakville. Oh, yeah. Sheridan. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, you know, at that time there weren't many schools. So it was like those, there were two schools. There was Concordia and Sheridan, if you wanted to do animation. So, uh, yeah, I got out in 93 and then, uh, the industry was hopping then. So yeah, I got a job in the States and, uh, animated on a bunch of stuff down there. One of your first big pictures was Casper that Matt and I That's, probably both Casper, watched. Casper, yeah, oh. yeah. And we loved it, right? Like I was a that was one of the rewatch movies as when we were young. You'd watch Casper forty six times in a row. No way. <laughs> you know, yeah, oh a, yeah, no. Ca that Casper, was a huge Casper VHS was a big replay movie in, in our house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then you actually went to work on one of my very favorite like childhood films, Toy Story. Yeah. Right? Uh, as an animator, and the best Toy Story, Toy Story two. Toy Story it, too, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the pinnacle it, it probably, it probably, uh, it's tough to say. The original obviously was really good, but like yeah. some people say, Toy Story two was, you know, the better of all of them. So, I think it was um, the Empire Strikes Back of the Toy Story film. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well I've seen said. Every one of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. I'm not bragging about it, but honest to God, it was like I just was lucky to step into that situation when they were working on it and I came in and animated on it. And I remember they showed us, um, I don't know if you guys know what storyboards are storyboard reels, right? Where the yeah, before, yeah. cause it's very expensive. You can't do the whole movie and see it. So you do it in bef before in, in pre-production, you, you set it all up, you draw it all out and you put the voices in and the music and all that. And I remember we watched it just that. And I was going, am I working on this? This is incredible. Like, especially yeah. with the, you got a friend in me at the end when the, the, who was it? It comes out. It was Bubla, or not some the, the the jazz singer comes out and does the big Rand, Randy you know, Newman. Frank, was it wasn't Randy Newman. Okay. It's a Randy Newman song, but I forget who's the guy. Anyway, it was a Tony Bennett type of guy does the big song and dance at the end. And I remember yeah. just going, "This is like turning on my buddy Steve and just going, man, we are. What is this? What are we yeah. on? Like, yeah, yeah. It was it was mind blowing. That that." How much how much more yeah. challenging was uh computer animation back then? Like you worked on Casper and that movie, what's crazy about that movie is I watched it with uh my kid now. I watched it maybe three years ago, four years ago. And what I had to say about the animation is it holds up, right? Oh, really? It's yeah, movies that Big don't. Time. Well, yeah, the movie looks like Casper and his friends look, and in most of the scenes, 
still very grounded in the film. Like, I mean, and that seems like a trickier thing today than it was, you know, in some movies like that. I'm, it, I, I've always just been surprised. Like, I mean, what was the what was the approach to the animation in that movie? Casper? The, the, the thing was, that the, the supervisors from that were the guys who did Jurassic Park a year earlier. Oh, OK. So it was Industrial Light and Magic. So this was they put their best people on it because um, Spielberg was producing it he wasn't directing mm. it brad sibling was the director and uh yeah they put a lot of people on it and everyone was really excited with the uh cg thing so we had like dennis murin from star wars fame and he's supervising it so it had a lot of um huff, heft be behind it so the, the production really had a lot of support so everything we were doing was like state-of-the-art at the time so i think the work that you are complimenting was because of that. I think it's just like, you know, when you, when you, when you throw enough effort at something, it, it could actually look really good. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I'm happy to hear that. You, you think it still holds up. I haven't uh, seen I mean, it in I, a long time. I, you know? I, I think so. I mean, when you, when you think back and you, you look at like how the ghosts were done and all that, like that's a movie that could easily be made today. And I don't know if the animation honestly would be any better today than it would be like than it would have been back then. Cause I mean, the ghosts and everything in the animation were done quite well, like, you know, fairly, you know, for for the type of film that it is, right? It's not a horror movie, yeah. right? So yeah. I mean, for the, the type of film that it is, you're not trying to make it actual, like, you know, ghostly scary. Um, so I don't I don't know if the animation would be any better today, to be quite honest with you. And this is you know, 30 years ago. Yeah. Well, I mean, the methodology would be the same. I mean, animation hasn't changed in the last hundred years. I mean, the, the 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 way you approach it is 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 the same. The process of thinking about a shot and animating uh, something that's dead, you know. Uh, but so, that, like you know, someone who's in the industry, like you know, you'd be able to know this a little better than I. But as a consumer, sometimes I watch a movie, and you know, I'm sitting there thinking, like, you know, this is 2024 or whenever you know I watch the movie. And sometimes the CGI is just can be so campy that you're just kind of like, wh where are we? Like I've seen, you know, I've seen movies in the nineties that just look more realistic or more believable than what I'm watching right now. So yeah. I, I, I guess from, I guess what I'm kind of approaching, I guess, is when I think of the animation, like I believe a little bit more the Casper movie because it's, it's supposed to be a little cartoony because it's supposed to be for a younger audience. But it's also doesn't look bad. It doesn't look campy, right? Uh, versus sometimes you see things where it's just kind of like, Ugh. like that was supposed to look real and it didn't. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, uh, there's a lot more places doing it now. Yeah. And there's a lot more like there's a lot more guys in their basements. There's a lot. You farm stuff out to to places and you know where sometimes the. the people in the country don't know the the material they're working with and it's you know and it stuff has gotten cheaper so these things are going to mm -hmm. happen things are going to look the, you know the spectrum is much larger now before it was like you know cg was like you know that little top tier stuff where now mm -hmm. it's it's so prevalent that it can look from the worst to the best now uh yeah. but you know i it's funny now with AI coming in and, and I don't know how, if there are people are utilizing that as well, but that could be okay. a, an issue could be, could be either good or bad as well. So yeah, just a wide gamut now of, of, of quality. It's all over the place, but. Do you know if like uh, the demand for animators are still there? Like it was maybe 30 years ago, like when you started, or do you say like, it's still, is it, is it oversaturated at this point or is a automation huh. taking people's jobs or what do you think? I wasn't expecting these cool questions. Um, <laughs> asking great questions. <laughs> so, I, I, yeah. I thought we were just going to get drunk. No, um, oh, yeah, no, no, Matt and I drank all night off. We're doing that, that too. No. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> just joking. <laughs> I'll give you better answers. Um, no, yeah, it, you know, it's it's funny because being a director, you have the, the spare not spare time, but between the projects, you need to fill in, you know, to make some money. So uh, I mm -hmm. take teaching gigs and. The amount of animators are are that that come into a class might be fifteen, right, or maybe sixteen, but the amount of classes there are now, it's all over the world. Like, I mean, again, like I said in the beginning, when I said that Sheridan and Concordia were the only two schools 
you know, teaching animation and Sheridan mm-hmm. being the only one teaching the Disney style, you right. know, the old, the nine old men stuff. Uh, now it's, it's everywhere. Like, I mean, I walk down the street, there's a course being taught, you know, I mean, I'm sure where you guys are, there's, and I think there's some great studios where you guys are, yeah. where there's, yeah, um, there is, yeah, there's schools. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a we we, we got a big industry in the east. Also, we have a big one here, like HFX. They do like Inspector Gadget and Care Bears. This episode is brought to you by Camille Najat with Exit Realty Metro. Camille Najat is an experienced real estate agent who prides herself in finding the perfect home for her clients. Camille can help you with a comparative market analysis to help determine the value of your home if you're planning on selling, or help you determine the going rate for the neighborhood you're moving into. She can also work with you at your pace. You can reach Camille by calling 902-880-8429 or email camille at exitmetro.ca. Also, you can find her on Facebook at Camille Najat Exit Realty Metro. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And and I know there was always a strong 2D, uh, a t- traditional way of animating out there as well. But now, uh, it's it the CG is is everywhere. I mean, you could take it. You could take a course in Manitoba. It's like there's it's it's, it's everywhere, guys. Yeah. No, I mean it's it wide all, these, all over the world. Too, right. Like, I mean, I I can take things up. Uh, Matt and I are looking at doing our very first project, and I was talking to him about it last week. And uh, he's talking to him about, and then the place is going to be all lit on fire, right? And burned to the ground. And he's like, okay, dude, how are you going to do that? <laughs> you <Yeah>. can do it. <laughs> you can't burn a bar down to the ground, right? Uh, uh, I so, mean, I would love to do that. That would be yeah. hilarious and awesome and fun. Well, but... I mean, last uh, night, the other day, I started looking on YouTube, started watching to see how it's done. 22 minutes front to back. People will show you fantastic ways to burn a yeah. bar down in digital technology. Right. Yeah. And these are guys, like you said, doing it in their basement, man. And it looks pretty darn good. Right. A lot of well, the, the Mike and I here, we're, we're actually taking some some filmmaker classes right now, actually. So just trying to learn some stuff. We're jumping into it blind. Yeah. Hey, look, no, I love it. You know, the, the best way to do it, guys, uh, is to, like, get a shot of yourselves going, oh, my God, the barn's on fire. Yeah. Cut to a bar- <laughs> <laughs> get some stock footage of a barn on fire have somebody throwing red light on your face is going, Whoa, it's really going up. Like you, know, you can do it that way. <laughs> that's the yeah. cheapest way to do that's it. The that's the cheapest way. But you know, if it's a good movie, it, it, that stuff works. And the audience doesn't even care. Sometimes they're going, as long as I'm buying the story, yeah. it doesn't have to be you guys in the, in there, you know, getting the horses out and throwing water. We, we just had a director on last week and she basically had, uh, like it was a vigilante type uh, person. She was going out to avenge uh, uh, folks that were uh, treating uh, uh, hypocritical hipsters, right? Uh, that were pretending to be feminists, but were actually manipulative monsters. It was a great premise for a movie. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, so she's a, she's like on a vigilante character, but because of the constraints of film, there's no, um, she couldn't have any violence in it where they actually physically went and harmed a director or director. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Person. That happens. <laughs> An actor. But, um, yeah. Man, it was a really cool. It still, it still works. The movie still absolutely works because it kind of cuts off, and your imagination does the rest, right? Yeah, man. You know, it's like I, I found that with parameters, when you've got restrictions, your imagination has to work harder. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as a director, I'm saying, as a filmmaker, and when you guys will, will discover this, like when you're doing your your film, you'll see, like, hey, we're not, we don't have the money to do that, so. Well, let's think. How do we get the same idea across? It's almost like finding another word in a sentence when you're talking. Like, you know, I can't use that word. I'll use this word. Uh, it's the same thing. But the effect, as long as the effect is the same, that's all that matters. In other words, the story is all that right. matters. The effect and is really what? kind of just there for thrills. It's not, you know, it doesn't well, have to be this great be, effect. There's something to be said too about kind of letting the imagination. This is another thing we talked about: is letting letting the the viewer's imagination take over can sometimes be better than showing it to them themselves, mm-hmm. right? Hundred percent. That, that that can be definitely be better, right? And it's uh, you know, it's just this is the great thing about art is you leave it up to the interpretation of the person who's receiving that you know the art, right? So 
Yeah, there's lots of things you can do about that, which I think is really good. It's always good to hear from people in the industry and give us certain tips. And, you know, we just got to get out there and try some things and fail at some things and learn from that. Right. Oh, yeah. 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 That makes me want to jump to like, so after you've done all this stuff with Toy Story and Disney, another movie that I've watched of yours already, uh, The Nut Job, because... You know, I have a 12 year old. So the nut job came out at a perfect time. Right. So I heard that movie. I watched it once and heard it about 13 times. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Right. With the kids love to rewatch movies. So right. uh, yeah, like what was it like directing your first animated feature, like shifting gears from just uh, being on the on the on the story and, and, and writing and working on these characters to actually directing the whole thing? Like, how does that work on an animated feature? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, well, I did a short film first called Surly Squirrel. It's on YouTube. You can check it out. Yeah. Surly Squirrel. It's like 12 minutes long. And I did that. That was my first directorial, um, you know, attempt. And then it got moved to being turned into a movie. And, you know, before the movie starts to go, there's all that writing you do, guys, you know, the storyboarding and writing. And you can keep working on the story, keep making it better or worse uh you know but you just keep moving forward and the thing for me was just like the stamina required to just get through it that was about two years to make that um and looking back on it as my first i always go uh you know i would have i'd love to fix that i'd love to fix that or that kind of works um yeah yeah in terms of looking back on that guys that was like 2000 14 2013 so about two 211 to 2014 is when uh i worked on it so it's been a while but yeah it was it was it was a lot of heavy lifting mm. a lot of again stamina it's just a matter of like keeping your 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 mental wits about you at all times you know there's stuff coming at you every two seconds that i wasn't sure. used to well, but eventually a- slowly you know i you start trusting your own instincts and, and knowing what's right but uh there's a lot of times where you question yourself and and that's something I don't do anymore as much. But before it was kind of like, am I doing the right thing here? Right. So yeah, that was the big process for me is like dealing with all those departments, all those people. I mean, if you watch the credits on that, is this like this endless massive, yeah, massive stream of number of names? And right? like and that was well, you, you had like characters like Liam Nielsen, Liam Nielsen in that film, I believe, right? Liam Nielsen was in it. <laughs> Sorry, and Will Arnett. Arnett. Well, they were telling me yeah. they were telling me don't hire Will Arnett. They were saying don't hire him, and I was thinking to myself, the guy's Canadian, right? He's fantastically funny and i, I thought it's like he's perfect yeah. one of the funniest guys but at the time he had only done um uh uh, uh what is it uh, uh arrested uh, development arrested development and and but he and, did a great role i loved him in arrested of development. course he, he was That's hilarious and i love him in that show hilarious and, and it wasn't the character of surly but he i could see in his voice he had this gruff voice anyway they didn't want to use him, but, but now he's like, batman and he's Batman. He's got this. Yeah, he's fantastic. He's, he's Lego fantastic. Batman. He's yeah. Lego Batman. The best Lego Batman. Are you face to face with like the uh, voice actors? Or yeah, I was there with them? Liam and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah cool. Hung out cool. with them. We're and... always curious about that. Well, the way it works is like you come in, you meet the actor, you discuss the the role. They 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 ask some questions. Uh, Liam was really nice. Like, of course, great guy. Uh, but uh, what I discovered with Liam was that. You know, with these consummate professional actors, they they literally they don't listen to anyone else in the room. They just hone in on you. If you're the director, they hone in right in on you. And I'm going, this is Liam Neeson talking to me. But when the <laughs> when he when he when he zeroed in on me, I was so like, oh, okay, well, this is my job. It's not it's work now. It's not this is Liam Neeson. This right. is a job. I'm like right. talking to an actor and I'm trying he's asking me about like, you know telling him well you know he can't see the room but you know there's a chair here there's the character you're talking to the character is about two feet away from you this is happening and and you're feeling this this is what happened prior this is what's going to happen so you discuss all these uh, parts of the, the story to him and uh yeah he was he was right. so professional Your so professional put his head there in the space exactly and let him go and let him go so the, cool. especially yeah. with, the, with the with the good actors like yeah. the big ones like I always, I'm going to stand back. I'm not, there's no way I'm going to sit there. Can you just, you know, you might go in and say, can you tweak that? Because yeah. they want to hear some direction. They don't want to say, you know, just let me go crazy here. But they, they, they want some corralling, but. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, yeah. especially a guy like Liam Neeson, who's done so much uh, for decades. Uh, I mean, the guy's been in, 
he's been in some incredible, incredible movies, right? Like, you know, Oscar winning movies and just, and, and, and then everything down to one of my favorite things he did was in uh ted 2 he did that little scene with the uh the lucky charms or the tricks the tricks are for kids or thing yeah he, he does the irish guy scenario. i know yeah and he was like are you sure no one's gonna follow me and he's like i won't forget what you've done for me today and like he so he funny. is he is funnier than you think he's oh, yeah. hilarious and and what makes him funny is he's so dry i mean he, i know he's not funny in uh nut job but after the recording i remember talking to him and saying hey what are you doing next and he's like uh you know, this whole action movie thing, no one's believing it. I want to start doing comedy. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, is he joking? He's like, seriously, he's like, I, comedy, that's the place to be. He goes, it's it's amazing. Ricky Gervais and I, we had a lot of fun. He goes, and he just kept talking about comedy and how action movies are pathetic and stupid and nobody's wow. buying me jumping out of a helicopter, <laughs> he says. <laughs> Meanwhile, they, the guy, made three, they made three Taken movies because I the know. first one was so amazing, but. Yeah. yeah, he they made money, right? So yeah, you can't you can't escape that once it starts making money, you know. I'm a big ambassador for comedies. When it when any whenever any actor crosses over the line to comedy, I think it's one of the hardest places to be, and I absolutely love it. Right? I mean, I love it when they can come through. And that's like it's like De Niro. De Niro yeah. gives yeah. you some of the, the best best. It's one he's one of my favorite actors. Like he's one of the best dramatic actors, and then he goes into a comedy. And I'm busting up laughing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How like Midnight is. Run is one of the funniest yeah. movies. My son and I just can't stop watching. We love it. It's so funny. Mm. Yeah, yeah, he's hilarious. The yeah. Hilarious. How old's your son? Oh, right now he's 18. Oh, cool. Okay. Right yep. Yeah. Any well, interest in the in the, the family business? Question. Yeah, let's not get into this. He just, he's going, he's going into film studies. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I tried talking about it. I tried telling him, don't do it, buddy. Don't do it. But he wants to do it. Let's see. Good for him. Now, why not yeah. try yeah, first and lots of life to live? So whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. He's young enough. Yeah. Let's see. So okay, Let's we see. should probably talk about Zombie Town. We're sure <laughs> Zombie Town. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're so, okay on time. Yeah, Z- Zombie Town. Like, if I could give you my interpretation of it, actually, like you know, watching it this morning, um, this movie brought me back to like grade four, grade five. That's honestly. exactly. Yeah. That's it. You don't have to say anymore because that's yeah. exactly what the intention is. It's not meant to be a huge goosebump guy, right? Yeah. Huge goosebump guy. Loved R.L. Stein. This was almost like SNL meets R.L. Stein novels. Like SNL meets goosebumps because, I mean, you have Chevy Chase, you have Dan Aykroyd in there. I like that you kind of threw a couple Canadian in there. Like you have the what's his face from the kids in the hall, things like that. Like, you know, so there's a couple of nods. Yeah. They they have, so there's like some Canadian nods in there, uh, which I liked. Um, Mm -hmm. But honestly, it was like SNL meets um you know meets uh goosebumps with yeah it, it honestly it brought me back to being grade four grade five again well that's yeah. the, that's the biggest that's the biggest compliment because that's the idea we were like my, my core writer and i always said it's like we're not making a movie for teenagers we're not making a right yeah you know it's not scream it's not it's even it's it's an entryway gateway film for for a 10 year old to get into horror films and say oh zombies okay i get it you know we can't have and if you noticed in the movie we don't have any brain eating we don't have any of that stuff Mm -hmm. but we had to come up with some kind of you know you know soul sucking that yes you know like um with that whole disney magic thing with the lights and all that so it's it's really a young nine to eleven year old kids idea of what a horror film can be that is friendly enough to watch with your folks uh i don't even think we have any swearing in it i don't Although think so I, either yeah i don't think we did i think the producer said to me he goes go ahead and swear and i had swearing going on but then we cut it out it's it, 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 even it i felt blurred. they didn't need it the lines can be blurred a little bit sometimes with these things right like i mean i have a three-year-old and he's really into superheroes and everything and we were watching um we were watching uh uh Green Lan- a Green Lantern movie that we saw on uh, one of the streaming things. Right. And we were watching it. And, uh, you know, obviously it's Green Lantern. So there's some, you know, it's cartoon, but it's violence a little bit and all that stuff. And my wife asked me, she's like, are you sure this is good for him? And I'm like, yeah, it's probably, a, you know, maybe punching a little bit of above his weight class, but he likes the superheroes, whatever. And I was like, but I was like, probably not much more. Cause I mean, I watched Spider-Man and X-Men when I was like, you know, seven years old or something. Right. Yeah. So, but then all of a sudden at one point they, uh, I think 
one of the characters calls someone a bastard in it. And I was kind of like, um, okay, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe this is isn't for who i thought or, it was gonna be for is it a kids movie or a tv show it's a, it was a it was a it's hour a... and 15 minute long uh oh, green yeah. lantern origin story for like sinestro right yeah 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 it's tough yeah to it's that. yeah it's yeah it's a tricky spot to be in with the kids like you know yeah yeah i mean yeah, yeah, my son saw stuff that maybe he should have. My daughter's watching stuff way be- above her age too. It's oh. like, holy <laughs> so so is mine. We just watched. Yeah, like, like we watched The Exorcist. We've seen all the things. Oh whoa! <laughs> yeah. how, old's your, how old's your kid? She's big in the horror. Twelve. Twelve. But, yeah, I was probably twelve when I saw it. Twelve or thirteen. I, 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 I mind, think I was. I, I was like eight or nine when I saw The Exorcist. Yeah. Oh. I had I had an, I had a cousin older cousin who was like three and a half years older than me and he was like let's watch it we were in his basement and he was like let's watch the Exorcist and I was like sure so I kind of experienced a lot of things at the same time he did so I kind of I kind of punched a bunch of my above my weight class at times we watched the original Carrie the other week and I forgot all about the like nude scene. Like at the very beginning of that movie, the very beginning, yeah, yeah. That, it's like the longest nude scene of it's all the time. The longest nude scene. And, Talk and, and about it's the so... most uncomfortable Whoa. thing to watch with your stepdaughter. You're like, oh, oh fuck, yeah, bro. How old is she? How old is she? Well, yeah, I was watching it with her and her uh, mom. Like, I'm like, I'm basically, uh, I'm sitting on a chair, like the the chair to the to to the right of the couch, and I just basically turned the chair around, you know, almost the entire time myself. I'm like, all right, you guys enjoy this. I'll be back in a sec. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I pause. And just, we're gonna fast forward through this, honey. I think this is kind of boring. <laughs> yeah. I like doing that one. It's like, yeah, yeah this is boy, I'm just talking. But yeah, but yeah, so but honestly, like Zombie Town seems pretty safe for pretty much all ages. Um, yeah, you know, yeah, like, that, uh, that's the key. Yeah, that it's yeah. that's safe for a lot of people to watch. And I think Ackroyd was excited about that too because he wanted his kids in the film, oh, right? Like, yes, cool. yeah. And, and, and I'm, 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 I mean, I'm a huge Dan Ackroyd fan. I mean, he's a Ghostbuster, oh, so I love that, right? Oh, yeah, and, yeah, oh, yeah. Dan is, yeah, yeah, your heart. I know it's like I couldn't believe it when he. Look, I, I, I was, I was taken out to to talk to him to get him interested in the film, and I just thought to myself, even if he says no, I don't care. The fact yeah. that I just was in the same room with this guy Amazing. is all I cared about. I was just like, I just want to be in the same room with him, and just meet him, talk to him for like ten minutes, and like I am this set for life. And I did not expect him to say yes. He was like, well, there, and, and, I mean, he's a big supernatural guy anyway, and that's how we, that's how, yeah, we baited yeah. him. That's how I baited yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. I knew it because you know he he's a big ghost stuff. guy. He loves. I mean, he's like. Well, you know, I saw that you uh, a couple of nods. Like you know, people may not know it, especially the kids. But there's there's a couple. There's a little. I know. I noticed a few nods to him in the movie because I saw his little crystal crystal skull vodka. Well, that was on purpose. Yeah, I, yeah that was yeah, on purpose. Yeah. That was me. That was me. Yeah. Going, hey, Dad, I'll put I'll put in as many of your crystal skulls as you want, and he would just loves that. Yes, mm-hmm. because, I uh, bet he did. Oh yeah, I was sticking them in everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah so i mean that's obviously he you know he made the if anyone who's listening doesn't know he 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 is the one who owns crystal skull vodka and that is based off of the same crystal skull of indiana jones and the crystal skull like those theories and all that stuff so yeah but for that him was, it's not a theory well it's yeah, to him it's not a theory yeah for him it's yeah. real yeah, yeah. Thinking so, about, I mean, let's do him on joe rogan sometime if you ever get a chance to watch yeah, i've seen that one yeah 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 it's, like oh, a few hours long. it's fantastic yeah oh it's incredible fantastic episode yeah so yeah I'm a, I'm a big fan of him so as soon as i saw that as soon as i saw he was in it i was like okay i'm pretty excited to see this and then and then chevy chase is in it and mm-hmm. i was not to be completely honest not a huge like 1980s chevy chase fan um but what won me over with chevy chase was community love yes community. and yes. he was he's so great in that in it. Yeah, yeah, he's so, so good, good in it. it. Yeah, he's so good in it. So, um, yeah. I could ask you back to you on the director's chair. Like, so you went from animated to oh, to live action. Live yeah, action. yeah, so yeah. What was that transition like? Did you find like it was like infinite more challenges, or was it easier in a sense? Like, how did you feel about that transition? Uh, uh, look, I'll put it to you this way. Like I said, I came off. I directed two animated feature films before mm-hmm. Zombie Town. And I will tell you that directing Zombie Town, which was basically four weeks long, was four weeks only mm-hmm. shooting time. 
And that shooting time was, I'm not joking, guys, the hardest gig I've ever had in my entire life. The hardest. I've never been so inundated with like questions and intensity. Look, I don't know. Other live action directors might say, oh, it's nothing. For me, that was like, and I mean, I've worked as a janitor. I've done <laughs> stock boy. I've been a waiter. I've, I'm talking, I've been in the Armed Force Reserve at Fort York. I, I <laughs> This was the hardest job. <laughs> Just guys, like super hard. Like, like you're, and it was a night shoot too. So we'd start at like mm. four or five in the afternoon, mm. shoot all night, and you'd be going home at six. Let me put it to you this way. And I know we're running out of time here. Oh, but yeah. uh, I, they said to me, you need a driver to drive your home. Right. And in all the yeah. other things I directed, I always drive myself home. I'd be like, what's the problem? Why would I need a driver to drive me home? The reason they have a driver to drive you home is because you are so spent. And yeah. I don't know. It's almost as if like you've taken like a huge concoction of drugs or alcohol <laughs> and you're so messed up, but it's all from the sheer uh intensity of the of the directorial experience that you're just like this being driven back. You cannot drive. It's it's totally, totally yep. true. I was going to say, yeah, it's, so, probably, it's probably an insurance stipulation. We're insurance guys. So they probably said, hey, you know, we don't want anyone gonna crash. any accidents on the way back. Exactly. You know? So this well, must have been long. Like, yeah, you were saying like, so from like five until six. So you're doing like 13 hour overnight shoots. 13, then. 14 hour shoots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, did you yeah. go like seven days a week for four weeks or did you take some No, we had the or... weekends off. You did? Okay. We had the weekends yeah. off, surprisingly enough, because of union rules. So, yes. Because you know, they would break you. I think would you, I don't think I could survive. If it was full seven, 24, seven. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah five days, but those five days were grueling, 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 grueling. Uh, yeah, I could go on and on about it, but it was, uh, it was incredible. There were moments where it's like, this is awesome. And it's amazing. This is happening. And I'm controlling like a huge set of all these people. But at the same time, you're constantly worried about the, your budget, your schedule, time, producers sitting there going like this the whole time, walking past too. <laughs> Like the time, uh, so you're like, okay, well, I'm not going to get this exactly the way I want it. I just got to go. Uh, so that's the difference between that and animation. And animation, it's like stretched out over like you know a year and a half too. And this is like those two and a half years squashed into four weeks. Yeah. And I'm not kidding. All yeah. the arguments, all the discussions, all the meetings, all that. So that's so, that's it in a nutshell. Are you jumping into another live action feature next, or are uh, you looking at doing animation again? What's next for you? I'll do either. Uh, I've got. Uh, again, like being a director, it's like these things, sometimes they go, sometimes they don't. Right. So there's a bunch of things on the boilerplate right now. They're, they're ready to go. Some are not. So yeah, uh, some are live action, majority are animation. Cause uh, yeah. 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 So yeah. Well, before, before we, uh, before we let you go, uh, you start your movie Zombie Town with a uh, with the Ar- Arl Stein quote, and uh, I figured I'd have to ask you because it talks about you know uh, basically the quote to paraphrase is you know if there if if zombies weren't real there wouldn't be so many stories about them. Right. Uh, so does Peter think zombies are real? course not but <laughs> on film on cinema in cinema they're real yeah mm-hmm. I, I don't know how to put it like in terms of like cinematically speaking it's like they are the most it's the most powerful image like the idea of dead people walking coming to come after you especially the fact that they're slow this is such are a like, great image out of all the you know take away ghosts because some people don't think ghosts are a threat but of all of the supernatural threats that we face zombies are probably one of the biggest and most real things that people worry about because literally the expression is well what do we do when the zombies zombie come? apocalypse yeah yeah right i know i don't know why that, that is but the zombie is just a great movie idea is what it is i think apocalypse is an obsession as well post-apocalyptic world yes it's one of the things to build ever right you know that's a where the brain goes and it's just a fun place you can do whatever you want right you can I was just watching uh, Mad Max there the other night, the new one. It was fantastic. Uh, what was it called? Furiosa? Furiosa, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I liked yeah. it. I loved it. 
I loved it. It's great. It was great. It was great. Yeah. I don't know why it's getting such a bad rap. It was like no, I have no idea. I uh, I watched it in two parts, but uh, it was a longer movie, and I was just I watched it started too late at night, but I absolutely loved it from start to finish. Hemsworth is amazing in that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he did a wicked job. Yeah, fun yeah. show. Um, so actually, uh, so right after you, our next episode is Alien Elliot Van Dusen. He's a paranormal investigator for Atlantic Canada. So he was an ex RCMP officer. And, no way. Uh, and uh, yeah, now he he spends. He investigates time. the paranormal. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, I'm writing this one down. Yeah. So he's coming out on the 29th. <laughs> uh, so so right after right after your show here. So uh, we got a real nice scene going a paranormal. So That's do awesome. you yourself believe in ghosts? Yes, I've had a couple of weird things happen to me. Cool. And aliens. Sure, yes. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Yes, I, I had to play that over because you guys are official. Like, so when I say this stuff, this is on the record. So I got to think it out. Yeah, yes. it will be front, front page of the newspaper tomorrow morning. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is, honestly, like, this is awesome, Peter, because this is really fitting into our Halloween theme. So we were so happy to have you on here. This has been awesome. Like, yeah. You guys are fantastic. I yeah, love you guys. I, I want to do this again with another movie if I can with you guys. You guys are yeah, fantastic. Absolutely. So, Anytime, yeah. man. Let reach out direct, even if you want to call us a rant about somebody. We'll, we'll I take would it. love to. Any Talk excuse to, to throw. Your head. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 if you, if you need a voice actor, I thought about doing that when I was a kid. So give me a shout. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Writing it down. Awesome. Conrad. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Peter. Cheers. All right, fellas. Cheers. Nice Cheers. All the best, guys. You guys are fantastic. Cool. I appreciate it. It was fun. Thank you for listening to The Afternoon Pint. We are an independent podcast and we need your support. Please take a moment to hit that like, follow, and share button. Email us if you have an idea or suggestion for the show. Please send your feedback. We'd love to hear from you.